Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show how to make a commercial quality lube at home. You're not going to find the ingredients in your pantry, but they're all food or cosmetic grade and totally safe. Making your own lube gives you complete control. I'm not talking about adding some cornstarch just to thicken it up. You can change the viscosity, flow, and feel. This is a simple recipe I like for water-based, clear, lightweight gel. I'll also go over some stimulating options like warming and cooling. It works both for men and women, and once you're set up, it's surprisingly affordable. The backbone of a good lube is water plus a thickener. I'm using hydroxyethyl cellulose, or HEC, which is the same ingredient found in personal and pharmaceutical gels. Cellulose powders love to clump. The main reason is that they take a long time to fully hydrate. If you add it too fast, the powder starts hydrating, forming a gel that can trap any non-hydrated powder inside, creating clumps. You might think that adding small amounts gradually or just adding it slowly would help, but it won't. The new powder gets trapped by the already hydrated gel before it can fully hydrate. This creates stringy clumps that are very difficult to disperse. Because HEC needs about 30 minutes of stirring at 50 degrees Celsius to fully hydrate, getting a stirring hot plate is a must. The scale is also critical, but they're pretty cheap. Just look for jewelry scales with a 500 gram capacity and 10 milligram precision. Your beaker is going to be sitting directly on a hot plate, so you want to get a good quality borosilicate glass. For measuring and mixing, one ounce cups and wooden sticks that are used for epoxy work fine. Here's a list of ingredients. They're pretty self-explanatory. One thing that's important here is the propylene glycol. We're going to mix the HEC in the propylene glycol before adding it to the water, and that takes care of the clumping issue. Potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate have a slightly synergistic effect when combined. However, they only work in acidic solutions, but that's okay because the lube needs to be slightly acidic. Citric acid is used to bring the pH down. It's too strong to be added directly, so mix up a 10% solution ahead of time. One reason it's so difficult to recreate manufacturer's recipes is the variations with the same ingredient name. Although HEC has a wide range of viscosities, the food and cosmetic grades are usually between 2,000 and 7,000 millipascal second. Some ingredients can completely change their role. Hyaluronic acid can help with wrinkles, but only if it's small enough to penetrate the skin. In lubes, skin penetration would lead to the lube drying out quickly. Frustrated guinea pig-like chirps and muttering? Satisfied, guinea pig-like chirps. Heat 100 milliliters of distilled water to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. With HEC, the temperature isn't as critical as methyl cellulose, but don't go above 140 Fahrenheit. While that's heating, we'll create the HEC propylene glycol slurry. So measure out 5 grams of propylene glycol, 1.5 grams of HEC, and then add the HEC into the propylene glycol. Mix thoroughly for about 30 seconds, scraping the sides and bottom. Once the water is heated, slowly add the slurry and stir for about 45 minutes. Next, turn off the heat, but continue stirring. When it gets down below 110 Fahrenheit, add the potassium sorbate, and let it mix until it's dissolved. It should only take a minute and then add the sodium benzoate. Keep it stirring until it gets down to room temperature and then test the pH. Add the citric acid solution a few drops at a time to get to the desired pH. For the preservatives to work, it needs to be a slightly acidic solution, about 5.5 or below. That puts it in the recommended range for anal use, but for vaginal use, it needs to be a bit lower, between 3.8 and 4.5. Once you have the desired pH, you want to test a little bit on your forearm. Make sure there's no irritation or any discomfort. You should not feel anything at all. The skin should not turn red. After that, it's ready to be put in a bottle and used. The recommended storage is just cool and dry and it should last about nine months. Commercial lubes typically use essential oil extracts to create warming and cooling sensations. Menthol activates nerve receptors, tricking your brain into feeling a cool tingle. Warmth is often created by increasing blood flow, leading to an overall increase in stimulation. Wintergreen and eucalyptus work well here. The extracts should be diluted to about 1% of the total solution. Using them directly can damage the skin and even cause bleeding. 
Using 15 milliliters of the HEC gel we just made, add four drops to create a noticeable warming effect. For a slightly different feel, you can combine additives, like using two drops of wintergreen and two drops of eucalyptus. Adding a couple drops of peppermint will provide a decent tingle. Make sure to mix it well for uniform dispersal. Before using on sensitive areas, always perform a forearm test. Apply some lube to your forearm, let it sit for 10 minutes. There should be no redness or irritation. The sensation should be very slight because it'll be several times stronger on sensitive areas. Do this for every batch of lube, whether using additives or not. If you want a thicker, stringier feel, you can use powdered lubes. Unlike J-Lube, K-Lube contains preservatives, so if you like the feel, it can actually replace the potassium and soda preservatives. At some point, I might do a video on making cum lubes. The biggest difficulty is that the real stuff has multiple textures and opacities going on. There's a huge difference here if you wanted to make some lube to use versus you wanted to have something for a video. Until you're buying gallons, silicones are far more expensive to make than just to buy off the shelf. Hybrids, which requires silicone to mix with water, requires very expensive immersion blenders. Once you get over the initial investment, water-based lubes can be made for a few dollars a gallon.